you know what? What I was really impressed with, besides Gannon, who we're going to get to, the linebacking core is so damn fast. They're so damn fast. They're on everybody. <laughs> I mean, dude, the, the whole team, like I said, the, you know, from from soup to it's nuts, the oh, whole team. It's the whole team. Like, <laughs> playoffs, playoffs. We're going right past playoffs, dog. You know what I mean? Welcome back to another edition of Gen Sports Corner. Back at you for September twentieth, twenty twenty-two. A lot of things to talk about. You see the gear right now. Fly, Eagles, fly, baby. Big night last night. Mm. You no, know, you know the regulars right now. To, to my right, your left, Mr. Mr. Ryan here from Ryan Sports. Yes, sir. And then down below, you know, somebody I've known for a long time, man. Just honored to have him on the show. Very knowledgeable man. Go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. Mr. Chuck Thomas, uh, you're honored. Shit, I'm honored to be here, man. It's, it's, it's great to be on the show, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's, it's great to be in the company of, of friends and Eagles fans, man, because we have a lot to talk about. Do we? You know what happened last night. It Do came we? Out. I didn't get to put out my prediction, but I picked the Eagles. I was talking to my security guards at work the other day, and um, I thought it would be a tough game, but I thought the Eagles were going to really put it to their defense because they're not the same defense right. that we remember with Mike Zimmer. But I did not expect them to dominate the way that they did last night and for three – particular people to stand out the way they did. And the first one, obviously, everybody's been talking about. It's one Mr. Jalen Hurts, man. Listen, man, Jalen Hurts is the real deal. Like, you know, last year, admittedly, I think we talked about this before, like, I hadn't really paid much attention to the Eagles in the last couple of seasons, pretty much since the pandemic, honestly. Um, like, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a diehard, you know, Philly sports fan, and I don't mind when the team is doing okay and they lose some games and they just come up short or whatever. I don't mind seeing them lose like that. But when it's like, this team is falling apart, you know, and it's like an embarrassing debacle and like, like what was going on with, with Peterson towards the end. And just, I was kind of like, just, just, you know, and, and, and the fact that there was nobody in the stands, like I remember watching the first game with nobody in the stands and I just, I couldn't get used to it. So like, this is like my bounce back. I think I mentioned it to you when I seen you a couple weeks ago, this is my bounce back season because you know, it's just, it's just exciting, man. Like I haven't seen a team like this. They, they're, they're a unit. Like, you know, there's a couple teams that come to mind, like, Peyton's uh, Peyton and Denver when they went like 15 and one or 14 and two, mm -hmm. um, that offense was a machine. Like they didn't, they, they were so well, you know, pl planned out. Everything was so that's, that's what we're looking like. When you have an offense that swings that fluently, man, it's, it's, it's dangerous. And, and that's what, you know, the, the Eagles are, are, you know, through and through a dangerous team. And if, you know, if people are denying that at this point, they better get on the bus. Cause they're going to gonna get ran over, man. <laughs> Because this team now, is for real. Now, I want both of your guys' thoughts on this stat line here, right? Jalen Hurts went 26 for 31. Let's just think about that right now, 84%, which is crazy, off rip. 333 yards, one touchdown and one interception, which was completely not his fault. Not at all. The screenplay. Not at all. QB rating of 108.7 that should have been higher without the interception. And the only other eagle to do that, the last eagle to do that was Michael Vick. You're right. And he's the first person in first player in history to have what 300 yards, um, over 50 yards passing, over 50 yards rushing in a game, and then have an 84 percent or 80 plus percent completion percentage. Right, right, right. That's yep. phenomenal. And you look Incredible. at that that offensive performance last night. Now, what did you guys think of some of the throws he was making early on? Because that was the criticism of him in the preseason and in game one. I mean, they were crazy as hell. I mean, it just um it looks like he worked on his mechanics a lot. And it looks like he um, you know, his deep ball looks better as he goes through his progressions. He looks, you know, he looks more fluid just as a quarterback overall. Like I thought just I was very I didn't expect this much progression. I knew it was gonna be better, but he looked a lot better than I expected him to look and just his poise on the field, man. I mean, you just can't help but admire how how much better he's gotten. Yeah, he, he seems more comfortable. He seems it's crazy because he's one of those quarterbacks. Every now and then, you get one of those quarterbacks that that has this ability to take a play that's just about to go haywire, or it looks like it's going haywire. He's kind of just figuring out where to go. He's scrambling, and then all of a sudden, he just like makes this quick whoop, just like quick decision, throws his dart. That's just like. I mean, the accuracy last night on a couple plays, you know, getting chased out of the pocket, 
his mobility is incredible. Like that's, that's going to be difficult for teams to keep up with, you know, as a whole. And it's funny because you, uh, that, that Michael Vick team, you know, there's the similarities between the two teams, the two offenses was, was speed like that, that, that team that Vic had was with, uh, if I, if I remember correctly, you had, uh, was Deshaun was still on the team. Yep. Uh, we had, we had like a bit of a faster offense that just was hard to keep up with. We had that, you know, that just quick come at you, you know, uh, style of offense, which we had last night. Um, you know, it's exciting to see young guys. I mean, you know, who's the oldest on the offense, Dallas Goddard. Oh, well, I mean, besides the line, but I mean, as far as receivers and, you know, or, uh, Miles Sanders, maybe the oldest, like we're talking like a four-year vet is like our oldest guy on offense. Yep. And they're, they're so smooth. It's unreal, man. It's a, it's unreal. It's a, it's exciting. These receivers, you know, just the, the speed overall, it looks like we're a unit. That's, that's what's exciting about this team is that both sides of the ball, it looks like we're a unit and, and, you know, even, even the better Eagles teams in the history, it, it, you know, it, it's rare that we see them. It's, I, I, you know, it's rare that I've noticed a team, so unified, so on the same page, you know, on both sides of the ball. I mean, the defense too, incredible. Um, and just, you know, it's nice to see, like, we're going to have this for a couple of years. So you guys are all young and, you know, we got, uh, we got a good few years of, of, of fast, you know, smash mouth football ahead for us. And it's exciting, man. Right, man. He's stacked, man. Like you look at Dallas Goddard, Edge your tight end. Like you say, he's only like 26, right? AJ Brown just turned 25. You're talking about a guy for the future. And I mean, he's already damn near unguardable. Right? He's their Megatron, dude. He, well, well, if you compare him to Megatron stats in their first four years, they're almost identical. Yep. Right? Yep. He's, he's going to be our guy, man, for a while. Yep. And then you have the Slim Reaper on the other side, who is just like mm-hmm. the guys in the torture chamber, right? Right. Then, then you have Miles Sanders, who looks healthy for the first time in like two years, had a very good game yesterday. And he's so quick. I love how he just hits that line. And he's he makes some decisions so fast, moves left, right. You know, he just... Even if he doesn't pick up yardage, he he still is just aware and, and quick on that ball, man. It's this beautiful so, thing. So one of the things that I really liked about Jalen Hurst's progression yesterday, and it's something I, I did and talked about in a previous video. There's something called the uh, sale concept where you're flooding out one side of the field to attack defenses and specific, specifically zone coverages on the short, intermediate, and deep level, right? You have like a three-layer concept, right? And they ran that ad nauseum last year. And teams adjusted to it so much so that Tampa Bay, not only did they take that away from us in that playoff game, but they cleared out the whole center of the field because he had a tendency to go to his primary receiver on the right, go to a secondary look, and then, especially on, on deep in routes, dig routes on the left side, he never looked back across the field to go – all the way through his progressions and teams saw that on film. Right. And if you look at the all 22 film from that playoff game, the Levante David, he, they cleared out the whole center of the field. They're like, he's not going to look through the middle. We ain't even worried about that. Right. And I, and that's something that I've seen him improve upon, not just in the preseason game in the first preseason game, but in these first two games and specifically that shot to Quez Watkins, where he set that up oh, to short pl- passing. And that wasn't by mistake. That was by design. Right. And he was able to go go to his first read and then come back across the middle, read the covers direct correctly. The safety got caught with his, his eyes in the cookie jar. And by the time Quest was running by him, it was too late. And he hit him in stride perfectly. Yeah, that strike. I mean, he threw a strike, dude. The absolute strike. strike. I, don't, I don't think he does that last year. He missed on many of those deep passes. Even when he saw him, he was maybe a little bit to the outside. A little bit right. of receiver. This was pinpoint perfect. Took his time, set his feet. Completely different quarterback who is still growing. However, I see improvements in him as a passer that I have not seen to the same degree with Lamar Jackson, as good as he is. Agreed. Lamar's Agreed. been here longer, right? Fully agree. Jalen seems to have started that transition towards making that improvement at a quicker pace than Lamar Jackson. Fully agree. Yeah, so definitely. That was what was most encouraging to me. He was making the correct reads, getting the ball out. He had a couple of times where he scrambled, where he, he should have stayed more patient because they, this line, Lane Johnson, um, Sam Malu, Big Boy Kelsey, Landon Dickerson, Mylada, they're giving him an average of three to three and a half seconds per pass play, which is right. what was tops in the NFL. 
so he doesn't need to rush things. So he has a few bad tendencies, but it seems like he's cleaning it up slowly but surely. And those, those are one of the downfalls you get with a mobile quarterback like that is that they rely so heavily on being mobile that sometimes they overdo it without just by, you know, naturally just drop back and their natural reaction is to kind of stay moving. And sometimes it, you know, that gets lost a little bit. Right. Like, you know, if they, if, if, once they overdo it, I know Cam Newton used to do that a lot. At, at the one season where he would, they were really running the ball with him a lot. Then when he would drop back to pass, he was, he was constant in run mode. So it was like, he's constantly sweeping out to the left or the right, whether he's, you know, intended to or not, that's his, that's his tendency to do it, you know, because that's, that's like 90% of their play calling was, was him running, running off to the right, whether he's pitching it or he's throwing it. But when, when you drop back in on a third down play, they get lost in the scramble because it's just like a natural, you know, it's their automatic reaction as a mobile quarterback, which is, is a tough thing. But I, I think Jalen, you know, Jalen as, as a, as the biggest thing he's improved on is being a leader, like as, as all the way around, just a complete, like th that dude, he looks like the type of player that's responsible when the play goes bad and not like Carson Wentz responsible where he says it in the post game, like, Oh, we need to do a better job. No, like he, he makes up for it. He, he sees those things and it seems like he's done nothing but improve. Like I said, I didn't really watch much last year and I, I watched a good bit of highlight film this year going into it. So I've seen like a good cluster of what he did last year in, in a, you know, in like a, a shrunk down version of it. So to see what his tendencies were last year, even on big plays, even on good plays to see how much control he seems to have, like he seems to have such a cool head about him at all times, which is huge. I mean, especially, <clears throat> you know, as young as he is and as young as the whole team is, you know, it, he's, he, he's, he's very cool, very cool about it, you know? Yeah. And, and that's, that's huge and improvement as a leader. I mean, you know, those, those stats are incredible, but like, even if those stats, we don't have the same stats, you know, the stats are a little lighter, you know, they're not as, as, as great. Like as somebody leading a team like that, like I'm happy with that guy, you know, throwing the ball for, for my team any day when he, when you're, you're, they see the leadership skills. Those are certain things that, he's improving on is, is they're big. They're not, they're not dumb, you know, like just little running the ball, stuff like that. It's, just, it's like, like full game stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I'm glad you, I'm glad you mentioned that because there was one play where that really stuck out and that was the touchdown run. Longest touchdown run by the Eagles since Donovan McNabb. I think back in like 02 or 03. Five will always love you, by the way. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that touchdown run that Jalen had where it looked like he could have stepped out of bounds, but he was like, you know what? Let me sidestep back in bounds and then go through about three or four tacklers and carry them into the end zone. I mean, that that doesn't tell you everything you need to know leadership wise. Right. You know what it does. Right. Big. It's huge. It is. And then and then to, to not to change the subject, but this defense. Fucking Darius Slay. Come on. I love that there was that comment earlier in the week. <laughs> I love how Justin Jefferson said that he was glad that Minnesota drafted him. He was happier in Minnesota. We are too, Jefferson. Justin, you know what I mean? We're 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 glad that you're in Minnesota as well. No, we're not. You know, no, we're not. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But games like <laughs> last night, though. <laughs> games like last night, though. It, it's, it's it's nice to see. You know, like when you know they were, oh you they approached him about getting drafted by Philly. How'd you feel about that? All that extra attention and for him to kind of come in like not really. I don't feel like he had a chip on his shoulder, but. I mean, Slay, I haven't seen somebody play corner like that in a long time, dude. He is right where he needs to be every time, man. It's wow. crazy. Yeah, he read every route, man. Yeah, he's like, he's like on his, you know, it's like in the play, in the playbook. It's almost like he worked for, you know, he's on the Patriots or something. And they, they saw the plays ahead of time, something like that. You know what I mean? Because he knew, he knew right where to be at all times, man. Well, Justin Jefferson was... had, what, one catch? Yeah, one catch. One yeah. catch. Yeah, he was upset. At the end of the game, he looked just spent, you know. And and I mean, it was like every time the ball went in the air, I'm like, oh, Darius gonna pick this off. Like he oh, might yeah. not even be, you know, he'd be on the complete opposite side of the field. I'm still like, there's hope he might pick this off. Somehow he, he managed to pad that hand right where it needed to be almost every time. It's crazy. Yeah, he should have had like four picks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was as close to a, a Dion S shut shutdown performance as I've, I've seen in a long time. Yeah. I seen someone say that it was the best e Eagles uh, corner performance since Eric Allen against just, the Saints. I was just ninety three. I think they said it was. Hmm. Ninety two, ninety three, something like that. Eric Allen was the goddamn man. Let's be. Let's keep it a bean. I don't know if you guys remember. You know, Eric Allen was my phew, man. Eric Allen, Troy Vincent, and now Darius Slade was like my three top guys as Eagles corners. Oh yeah. 
You know, you know what I loved about the Eagles corners over, especially over like our, our, our Andy Reed run, Yeah, you know, Jim Johnson. I mean, you know, we almost had four different guys back there almost every year that the, the, you know, the, the rotation changed so much and they were unstoppable. Like you could always count on those corners to be, to do their job. Like Jim Johnson's defenses were, were incredible because he took essentially anybody and put, put them in these positions and they played just as well as the last guy or the next guy, you know, it was, it was, it was impressive. And, and you almost didn't catch it. Cause all these guys are, are, are like household names to us. You know, even the guys that were there one year, two years, we remember them as big playmakers because they were, you know, and, and it's, it's cool to see uh, guys rotate positions and, and new players come in and that defense still stay consistent like that. Um, but, you know, when you get a guy like Darius Slay, I mean, you, you don't get many of those guys, you know what I mean? You don't get many games like last night, man. You know, it's like, this is like Richard Sherman, Back in the day, you know what I mean? Uh, what was his, his uh, what he was he yelling? What the hell was he yelling about? Never uh, put a sorry, seems like Crabtree on me again. Yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> to Crabtree. He said, Crabtree. <laughs> so who's talking smack? He said, Crabtree. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's the error, though, because Richard Sherman was a bad man. The, the Legion yeah. of Boom was incredible that year. Um, you know, that's that's the type of, of, of stuff we're seeing from Darius Slay, which you don't get very often, you know? I mean, think of it. Uh, can you think of another? Not in uh, this day and age where you can't even breathe in a receiver's direction. Right. Getting the flag. And he he not only made him have a bag, he he shut him down like yep. completely. Shut and the way down. he played the ball, there was no contact. You know, no. there wasn't, there was no sweating getting getting a flag for no reason. Like he was right where he needed to be every time. It was impressive, man. He was, so, was so confident that there were a couple of plays where he didn't even turn to to run vertical because he was so confident that like you know it's if he if he goes a nine route I can run with him right he was sitting right on the routes man yeah it yeah. was it was it was it was it was incredible to watch I'm so excited to see the, the rest of the season because not only you know, did he shut down Justin Jefferson shut down Dalvin Cook right they took him out you know what what I was really impressed with besides Gannon who we're going to get to the linebacking core is so damn fast <laughs> they're so damn fast they're on everybody. <laughs> I mean, dude, the, the whole team, like I said, you know, from, from soup. It's the oh, whole team. It's the whole team. Like, <laughs> playoffs. Playoffs. We're going right past playoffs, dog. You know what I mean? It's really funny because when they were talking to, you know, a couple of the guys that were like, oh, predicting the Eagles to go to the Super Bowl this year or or to, to, to be in the dance or to be in the NFC Championship. And again, I didn't know much so going in. I, I'm not very optimistic until I start seeing some plays. Like, you know, I mean, preseason, we can play all as well as we want. You know, typically when we have a good preseason, we don't have a great season. Um, our best, our best seasons. In fact, I think the season we won the Super Bowl, we were like one and three in the preseason. Yeah, so, we yeah. so when we, when we suck in the preseason, we seem we tend to show up. It seems like historically, I, I don't know if that's through and through, at least as far as I remember. So <clears throat> to making predictions, you know, uh, before week one is, is crazy to me. And, you know, I mean, those guys know what they're talking about though. I mean, obviously they make these predictions every year and you know, they're, they, they, we ask them for their predictions for a reason for, the Eagles to be mentioned so often and, and it's such a, a new team too. It's, it's to me, that seems crazy, but after, at the last night's game and even last week, even though we, you know, we struggled a little bit towards the end, I see where there's why they see, you know, we, we easily run this NFC dude. Like, no, I, I, this is one of the few times where you can, you can feel it going to the season. I mean, that D line coming back with the same guys and then you upgraded it with Hassan Reddick and then big boy Davis in the middle. Then you finally not just got a linebacker in the Kobe Dean, but the linebackers are so good he can't even get on the field yet. Right. DJ TJ Edwards and then Kaiser White coming from the Chargers flying around. You know, Kaiser yeah. had the pick in the first game. He's exactly as advertised. So you got fast linebackers who actually won't be out of position like an Ernie Sims, who's like a huh. heat seeking missile with no direction, right? Right. You actually have competent linebackers. And then you have two starting level cornerbacks. You have uh High level cornerback in Bradbury, you have one of the top two or three cornerbacks in Slay on the other side, and then you have CD Gardner. We the question was, what are they gonna do a safety? Marcus Epps, he cool, but he a solid guy, he ain't gonna flash. And then they cut Harris. I'm like, why would y'all cut you out the starting safety? And then they're like, news flash, they just traded for CD Gardner. I was like, Oh, okay, okay, all right, I'll take that. <laughs> and then you bring in AJ Brown. Like the issue last year, not just with the Eagles, but with the Raiders. Both teams went to the playoffs, but neither one had a starting caliber wide receiver on the outside, like a star. Like, right. 
everybody could just focus on Devonta Smith and you had nobody else. Right. Everybody could just focus on Darren Waller and you had nobody else. Right. And what did what did the Eagles and the Raiders do to address that? Eagles were like, yeah, we're just going to trade for AJ Brown, huh? For for a bag of footballs, okay. Right, right. And the Raiders <laughs> say, "Damn, what are we gonna get Derek Carr? They're gonna get uh Allen Robinson? Like, no, nah, no, nah, we're gonna trade for Devontae Adams." I'm like, well, "Huh? What?" Mm, mm. And then they're like, "Oh, we ain't got a pass rush. Uh, we just got Max Crosby. Let's go get, pick up Chandler Jones. Yeah, hmm? No big deal." Yeah, and then, they, <laughs> and then they're like, "Oh man, what's gonna happen with Brandon Graham who came back healthy? Oh, let's get Hassan Reddick." Right. So like all these very well thought out play like. Playing chess. Right. Like the team name for my fantasy football team is don't know how he does it. Cause I really don't know how he does it. Like I'm gonna keep it real with you. Harry Roseman to make the moves. Yo, it's crazy. It's crazy. Just when you doubt out. him. Every time they, I've they, doubted they, him. They traded Jalen Riker for CD Garner. Like, think about that. <laughs> That's insane. It, it's crazy. <laughs> That's insane. I love how he was like, I'm gonna get you know, I got a little revenge in my, my heart for the yeah, game last night. Yeah, all right, bro. It's Come like, on, I, dog. I, I don't hate him. I really want to see him do good. I really do. Uh, no, me too. Me and, too. I don't hate on him either. It's funny to see them guys say, I got a little revenge in my heart. Listen, man, you ain't, don't be mad at us <laughs> that we, you know, you didn't work out here. Like, yeah. it's not our fault. You know what I mean? Like, we want nothing but the best for you. See, you're in Minnesota. We still love you. Yeah. I mean, like, people, some fans are mad at him, but they're really mad at Howard. They're not mad at Jalen Rager, really, because it's right, not his right. fault. And, like, to be fair, and everybody has revisionist history, nobody wanted Justin Jefferson. And they've mentioned why last night on Monday Night Football, and I don't know why people conveniently have amnesia about this, teams passed on him because they didn't know how he would be outside of the slot. They didn't know if he could get off the press coverage. I remember That's exactly that. That's why the Eagles and 20, 21 other teams passed on him. Right. Right? So I don't, I'm not mad at Howie for not picking Justin Jefferson. However, I am mad at him for picking Jalen Rager over some of the other guys on the board. Yeah, for sure. We got Patrick Queen at linebackers. Plenty of other guys to get, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. We 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 uh ain't not much more to say about that game. They look really good, and then you're gonna go in and play Ginger Jesus on Sunday, so that's gonna be very surreal. <laughs> um, listen, but- he's already. I love his po- his post game, you know, interviews <laughs> where he's like, "This is my fault." You know, I really gotta do a better job. Like, no shit, dude. Like that. I mean, we're, let's see what let's see what Carson Wentz thinks. Uh, listen, guys, we lost out there. You know, w- typically next week. We're going to try and score more points than the other team. And then we'll be all right. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, I got to do better. You know, I'm throwing balls incomplete. I'm throwing interceptions. I got to do better as a quarterback. Like, all right, man. It's cool that you're taking the blame. But like, you know, I, I, I think it was funny because last week I was like, man, watch, watch the commanders, the commanders. Like, <laughs> watch, watch them, you know, be something like unexpectedly. Watch all of a sudden Carson Wentz have a good season. And it's like, oh, never mind. Never mind. No, he, he no. I, well, I'll give you some pushback. I think he's going to have a, a, a good season. Well, see, I don't think it's necessarily fully on him because, I, you know, I still think Carson Wentz is a decent quarterback. I think, I, you know, I, the man, we said this before, the, I've never seen somebody get so, like, the Philly curse just, I mean, killed that man. Like, he had to watch us win the Super Bowl. Yeah, Like, I mean, nobody got it as bad as him. Like, he really, really took it on the chin there with the Philly curse and the Nick Foles thing. I mean, you know, the man, there was just no no shake in that. And it, it's it's crazy because, you know, I'm grateful that for that season that he gave us to what, like week 11, I guess he went out, right? I, yeah. I mean, it was incredible. But it, I mean, in reality, you know, past that, it shot him in the foot. He never recovered. And I don't know if it has anything to do with that season. Obviously, obviously his injuries didn't help. And, you know, I felt like we rushed him a couple of times. I mean, it, it's it became such a difficult thing because it was like, oh, well, we have to we have to play Carson. You know, then it was like it was like uh, when we're making a decision like, Oh, well, we pay this guy more, so we got to put him on the field. The other guy seems to be performing better, but and not saying the Nick Foles thing, but we still we sort of got that like loss with, with Carson where it was like we have to rely on him, you know what I mean? Where it's like we put a little too much on his on his shoulders, especially when this team is just I mean, after the Super Bowl, we fell apart pretty quickly, yeah. you know, nothing like nothing like a Philly team to dismantle, like you know, right away. The Phillies did it too when they went to the series, it was like. You know, when it's over, it's over. Like, <laughs> I mean, it is over, dog. Like, you know, it's, it's like it is done, bro. Like, it's you know, happy new year. We're moving on. Like, when it, we we just can't, you know, seem to get it together. And with, like, we can't, we can't just bow out gracefully. We can't just like squeak out and like lose. We just gotta like just suck. You know what I mean? Like, we gotta be one of the worst teams. Like an embarrassment. You know, I was a little bit upset with what they did to Doug. I felt like he got a raw deal. I felt like everybody. It becomes one of those things where it's like, oh, who's? It's his fault. It's his fault. Oh no, it's his fault. Nobody knows his fault. It is. Meanwhile, we're six and ten. You know what I mean? Like, 
like yeah. you know and we're worried about whose fault it, it is um but like i thought doug being you know i mean he won a super bowl in three years i don't know if you guys have you guys remember any other eagles coach winning the super bowl ever let alone in three seasons like the to, to way we kind of ran him out so fast was like it's almost insulting like you know we still we still uh like revere charlie Manuel as we should but like mm -hmm. Doug, I feel like Doug, we owed him better than that. You know, like I, I didn't, no matter how, even if you, you have a losing season, you go out kind of on the, on the down, downside of it, which, which you won the Super Bowl, you're not going to do much better. You know what I mean? You're not going to get much better. It's only going to go down for a little bit, but you know, even if you go out, like, you know, you're, you're not doing so great. I didn't, I, I didn't ever want to see Doug kind of leaving with like, like upset. You know what I mean? Like he was, he was like hurt by, by the way that them guys, treated them and, and a raw deal i mean it is what it is and like he said he's like oh you know when we, when we lose games it was my fault we didn't win and then when we win it's like we didn't win by enough like you only won by a field goal like you know i mean to, t to have your coach feeling like you know we when we win we don't win by enough that's crazy like that's that's way too much pressure dude <laughs> like yeah. win the games you know what i mean winning games is, is it like you shouldn't be in the coach's ear like what, what's up man you only won by 10 this week like i mean w is a w we shouldn't have them that's it. That's not something a, a coach, you know, and, and like, I had no faith in Doug. This is, this is uh Doug Peterson, the guy who had the uh, held the, held the, the snap for the Leon letdown play. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's <laughs> like, that's Doug Peterson. I know like the Dougie in, in the Eagles uniform looking all awkward and shit. Like he's not really supposed to be in here, you know, over here. Like, but I mean, you know, he, he, I felt, I felt like we owed him a little better than that. And, and again, I, you know, it's a, it's a business and that's, that's you deserve, and, you deserve one more season. And of course, as fans, we we have a, a little bit of a like a reservation for certain people, and we find, you know, like I love Doug because he he won the Super Bowl, and and he felt like such a, a guy's like a, a player, you know, it felt like one of us, you know what I mean? When you see footage of him talking and, and going over the tape with the guys, it was like it felt like one of us, like it was it was it was just as fun and exciting for him as it was for us, which is cool. I feel that same way about Nick too. I mean. You know, I, I had no expectations with Nick. I don't know. You know, I knew nothing about, about him going into last season. I didn't have any, like, I, you know, of course, I'll support anybody we, we hire. Obviously, we think it's a good idea. Dude, after what I saw last night, this guy's a, a bright future, man. I see a good good run with Nick. I, I, I'm very excited about this, man. Very he excited. Gets, Nick gets it, man. Um, yeah. So he's another one. It seems like one of us, dude. Seems like one of us. Like, he would have a cool conversation about just like we would talk about it, you know, which is, is cool, man. That's a... It's a big thing. Yeah. Andy Reid was the man, but he didn't seem like a guy you would like have a conversation with and it'd be fluent. I think, I think he, he held it in for the players. Right. You wouldn't see that side of him. But if you, if you see like, you know, the behind the scenes where they have the, you know, cameras, you know, he's like talking to Mike Vick and he's like celebrating with the show. He's that's Andy Reid is that guy. He just doesn't show it to the media. He's, he's super professional and that's what that's why he's one of the winningest coaches of all time because he's he knows you know he knows that he knows that he's got a good poker face and when you do right. see behind the scenes he's like one of the, the coolest most fun guys you know that could be like it's probably one of the things it's like your stepdad's a real dick but like every now and then he's cool and you're like you forget that he's that cool because he's like such a dick all the time he's always so like serious you remember yeah, that so first year um where forgot the guy's name but he either showed up late to practice or he did something and Andy Reid made him run like suicides or something like that after practice. Yes. And then, who cut, was then cut him the next day. Yeah. Who was that? Oh damn. Yeah. Who was that? That shit was great. That's no, the thing. He a real one. He not going, <laughs> he going to like keep it <clears throat> injuries and, <clears throat> and keep it real professional or whatever for the right. camp. But like when, when you go into that locker room, there's a reason why players play for guys like him and Charlie Manuel way past, even when shit is looking bleak, they right. put, they, they go out on their shields for guys like that. You know what I mean? It is leaders, leadership, man. Leadership yeah. skills that is like, you know, as a, as a different cloth than most are cut from. You know what I mean? Like Andy Reid is, is special. <laughs> Andy Reid's special. Absolutely. And Charlie too. Charlie too. Absolutely. Um, you know, so great game by the Eagles. Um, I want to briefly get into the Raiders and that debacle. Look, we're up. Um, might have been like 17 nothing at 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 halftime or something like that. We were, we were shutting them out. They had a donut on the scoreboard. Kyler Murray looking like he was seeing ghosts. He didn't know what to do. And then that second half, let them slowly march back. And I look at the score in the fourth quarter, it's 23-17. I'm like, what the fuck? And then <laughs> Kyler Murray has one play where he's scrambling around for 20 seconds. 20 seconds, man. Was it first down Freddy? <laughs> like, ridiculous. Right, 
It's ridiculous. And then he How'd the play end? How'd the play end? What did he get out of that? I think that's the one where he, he might have ran in for a two-point conversion. He just scrambled around, okay. like, ran around like Mighty Mouse. And it just, it's like, oh, my gosh, man. <laughs> Go to overtime. And then we somehow get the ball back. We're driving down. Hunter Renfro puts the ball on the ground. And Fabian Moreau somehow fights for the ball from two Cardinals defenders. And we keep the ball. You know, Darren Carson starting to warm up. We're getting a field goal range. Carr throws it out to Renfro in the flat. He goes to turn up the field and then fumbles again. Moreau cannot get to it. Then number seven, whoever the fuck he is, picks it up and takes it back to the house. Game over. It's just like. You know, one thing I'm already seeing in in two weeks so far is this season is one of them years. Like you can't like there's no such thing as the game is over. Like no. there's no such thing as a comfortable no. lead. No, no such thing as a comfortable that, lead. We saw that week one. Yep. I mean, right, right off the gate. Uh, yeah. and, and, and it's it's going to continue that way. You can't. Like, you know, it seems like we've, we're have we reaching an era, like a lot of the teams have 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 gotten that like four quarter fight in them. You unless know what I mean? Where they the don't Titans, stop. Unless you're like the Titans where they got their heads kicked in last night. Well, uh, listen, Buffalo is no joke either too. Yeah. Like Buffalo is no joke. Tennessee is not equipped to handle shit like that. You know what I mean? Not right now. No, Catch no. them in a couple of years. You know what I mean? Maybe, <laughs> but right now so it's not looking good for them. But all, Buffalo All I heard when serious. I was watching that game, all I heard when I was watching that game was... Yeah, <laughs> it's like we'll tear this shit off. Honestly, Buffalo. I think Buffalo is going to the bowl. I agree. I so agree. They are hidden shoulders. There's no way they should have been there last year, anyways. So I think they're going back. Yeah, they this year they're going to come. They're they're prepared. They'll be yes. You know, like I like I, I know you know Lacar. He's a big Buffalo fan, and and. You know, I, I watched since I've known Lacar, I've watched Buffalo because I always like to, you know, chat with him and not even on some like ball bus and stuff, like on some real shit. Like, what can you, you know, because yeah. I know I said I, I know many people don't talk about Buffalo, dog. Like nobody comes over. It's like, yo, dog, what about them bills? So I paid attention because I was like, you know, we had this conversation and it was cool because I, I picked the right time to pay attention. I watched this team, you know, build up to what they are now. It's it's great. Like, I, I'm I'm excited for what they got going on. I'm excited for Lacar. When's the last time he's, has he ever got to be proudly a Buffalo Bills fan? Like what in that ninety like Jim Kelly era and like were you really a proud Buffalo Bills fan that's after that misery. era? That's misery, right? Like, like as much as I I hear uh, Eagles fans complain, you know Chuck Ryan, you know about the the four NFC Championship games, one of three that we lost, right? I'm like, would you rather be that or lose four Super Bowls in a row? Listen, that giant Super best. Bowl, <laughs> that giant Super Bowl alone, that Phil Sim Super Bowl, that one alone, like Ooh. forget the other three, dude. That shit hurt. Ooh. Like, I bet you Thurman Thomas wakes up in the middle of the night and just like, oh, Phil Sims. You know what I mean? Like, he's, just, <laughs> he's like shook still. Like, you know what I mean? Like, for real, that had to stick with him. Like, that that was brutal. That was brutal. Yeah, man. Um, it was brutal. It's nice to see Buffalo winning again. And it's nice to see, you know, a new regime in the NFL. It's nice to see these teams that weren't really shit. It's nice to see Cincinnati making a run for it. It's nice to see these teams that aren't, you know, that aren't really in the, in the dance, like now have to be mentioned. Like, but they're, they, you know, they have to be taken seriously. Buffalo has to be taken seriously. When's the last time you said that? Like Thurman just, Thomas, like, you know what I mean? Like, not just that they're taken seriously, but they're going to be here for a hot minute. Oh yeah. And, and that's the thing too. There's, I love this. So cool. How sports do, does this thing where like every couple of years they reset to where it's like, this is a whole new era. I mean, dude, like what, three years ago, four years ago, we're in the, the Eli Manning that, you know, that the, the Drew Brees, the, the, you know, like the, the, the guys that we have for so long, uh, what the hell is it? Philip Rivers, even though, you know, he never really, like he poor guy just couldn't get over the hump, but you know, I mean, these, these solid quarterbacks and like, I remember as they were slowly one by one or, you know, a couple here, a couple there were retiring. It was like, Oh man, this new era, this new era is exciting as hell. And it's like, it's almost like I, you know, you watch, we saw it all start, but it's like now that now that it's in the midst of it, it's like you, you know, I almost don't remember how it started. You know what I mean? Like, it's so and it's exciting. Yeah. I mean, these these quarterbacks, it's a new ball game. It's a new ball game. There's a lot of mobility in quarterbacks. It's a whole different scheme with teams, and and it's exciting, man. It's it's a a faster game, which I, I always love. I always love a speed game. You know, like a just a high scoring fucking just go go for it. Absolutely. Now I want to I want to get into some of the other games, and then we're gonna quickly shipped over to boxing 